before we go live. And I, we're I like live. Hey, welcome, guys, to the country. <laughs> right in the middle of the goddamn conversation. Sorry, guys, we've been talking nonstop, and Schmeckle just hit the button on us. So you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Well, I feel naked well, now. Now Pat, now, now Pat knows how weak I am. <laughs> That's the week is uh, one way to describe <laughs> your junk, I guess. I'm so hey weakness. guys, welcome to the country. It's an open house. We don't know what's going on. Shooting the shit. We got Zell, Ralph Retort, Schmeckle, and uh, Fat Pat from Poisoning the Well. Hey, how's Wait, it going? Wait, did I get that right? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, you guys were talking like atheism and Gamergate and uh, some Oh, yeah, we went, we went back to the, the old school uh, issues I of know. the day. We kind of were like, uh, Reformatting, uh, or, or, or I guess remapping the movement of uh, of the of the of this side of the internet. I guess I, I hate yeah. to say community anymore because it seems to just trigger people now. Um, yeah. But it's like where the, where we are located on YouTube and the people we interact with, uh, even on the fringes, we kind of. That's so weird. It's like that. you just described a community. <laughs> I'm trying my best. It's the it's the term at this point. It's just like. <laughs> Why do you think it's so triggering? I, I, some people like to use the term cringe. Why do you well, think it's so cringy? It's, well, I mean, first off, it feels like it's just, it's overused. It's just, you keep saying community, community. And then it's like, I think, uh, like with a lot of the issues we deal with in the day, it's, it's definition. Uh, what is the community? Is the community the creators that make the community? Or is it the audience that participates in, uh, in, in those creators? Or is it all the whole umbrella? Um, and it seems like a lot of times, uh, you can't define what the person's referring to when they say community, because you'll see creators saying, "Oh, in this community," and they're only talking about their other creators around them. The their, you know, the people that could be uh, associated with them, uh, whether it's somebody they'd be against or with. Regardless, they consider that the community. But the community is, I feel like, the audience on, on top of that. So, you know, you want to talk to the community. You're not saying creators. I want to talk to the audience. So, it seems like at times I've seen people get triggered over. When someone says they made, uh, let's just say a particular individual said that they made a tweet kind of talking about the community and then immediately some creators think that they're talking about them directly and then they start uh, a war. So sometimes that happens and I think it's like, well, sometimes I'm not talking to the creators. I'm talking to the majority of the community, which is made up of the viewers and the people that interact and you know that stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the, the, the term community. That sometimes it just feels like I need to d define exactly what I mean. <laughs> and I just don't want to say it 30 times, but you know, in a minute. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, it, I don't know. Like, if you identify a, a body of people instead of, mm. I don't know, individuals, God, I feel like I'm making Sargon's approach. <laughs> the individualism. Uh, go on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, I think with Sargon, what he's doing right now, I think he's trying to make things more in the central center. Try to make sure we uh, that the whole term liberal doesn't get like treated as like synonymous with, let's say, like actual actual Nazis. Um, because at some point, you know, society will probably switch to a more liberal thing, and then it will go back to more conservative. Well, it's yeah, like it, a pendulum. It's, yeah, and that, that's something uh, Fane and I have said, uh, particularly, is, is the pendulum movement, that you always see it It swings one way real far, and it pushes out, and everyone starts reacting to that, and then it just starts swinging back the other way, and it's like then they're having to backpedal, you know, because uh, if you can, if you claim to be a liberal, immediately you're an SJW. If you uh, claim to be uh, aligning yourself as conservative, you're now alt-right. It's like you can't – there is – like there's most of the people are, are closer. They're, they're a liberal conservative or in the middle, but it seems to be now you just can't even give a little bit. And if you're, if like, if you disagree with someone from the alt-right, you're an SJW. If you disagree with someone from the, that's an SJW, you're an alt-right. It's like, I can't disagree with you because I just think your point was bad. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of a hard thing. I think trying to get people to be more on the center is a really smart thing to do um, just because it's, well, it's also safer because. Well, uh, Bunty actually said that he, uh, I think this is a tweet he made about uh, he doesn't trust fringe groups, any group that's too far out there on the edge. He, you can't trust them because the decision-making 
starts to be very one directioned and without any rationale behind it or even uh, you're not being skeptical at some point because at that point you're just kind of sticking to this very isolated uh, decision making. But yeah, I, I guess the other, the other term that got familiar is you, you run the risk of setting up an echo chamber, right? Which is which is what we used to describe a lot of the the SJW people, and that they're just listening to the same thing over and over and over again. Well, yeah, we have the um, we it happens have in the our echo group. chambers. We have the echo chambers, and then um, I think. Um, yeah, I guess you can call like the, the, the SJW echo chambers as being fringe groups, but then you also have the fringe groups. I've noticed this with the people that um the people that uh want the ethno state. Mm-hmm. I've noticed I've noticed this with them. They're not an echo chamber. They do the opposite. They go to the opposition, but only to reinforce their ideas. If you catch my drift. They they will bring anybody on who's like, Hey, can we like not have violence and try to like get whiteies all together? And they'll use that and they'll, and they'll just, all they got to do is find one thing. And I'm exaggerating here, but it could be like, you got a Jewish friend. I told you we need the ethno state. Gotcha. And it's like, <sighs> like, you know what I mean? There's those kind of fringe groups too, where they actually, mm-hmm always go to the opposing force, but it's only ever mentally reinforcing them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's that side of it. I, I definitely, I've seen, it's like seeing this, these little pockets of uh, teams, you know, building up. It's like, mm. oh, fuck, I thought we were doing this for fun, man. Shit. <laughs> you thought wrong, Pat. Yeah. I mean, I had a talk with uh, some black guy, uh, Derek, uh, a couple weeks ago and we were just kind of, he was just like over the shit that's going on and just it's like i thought we were just having fun i just want to have a good time like, it's like i made videos we made videos to have a good time but all of a sudden now it's like it just became this you know high school drama or just like we gotta have a fight with somebody and it's like what what fuck i thought i was goofing around and that's the other thing i think it's funny because you know, fame has got himself in, in some hot water recently i'm kind of thinking who takes Fane seriously? First off, he calls himself so Fane. He dresses like a dipshit, and he's on a channel that makes nothing but dick jokes. How is that? <laughs> how is that guy insulting you? And or or even you take something he says as an insult? Like really? Jesus. <laughs> nothing but dick jokes. Sounds kind of gay. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Goddamn. <clears throat> So, Zell, you're usually, like, tied to the hip to Brockus. Where the fuck is he? Uh, and just, Ralph left. Yeah, we just lost Ralph. Uh, the, Brockus is in his uh, Discord jerking off to his uh, own little fame right now. Oh? I think that's what he's doing. I think I think Brockus is in his own Discord, like, uh, answering some fan questions or something. Oh, Okay. Did you wanna? Did you wanna shoot him the link? I thought I thought he probably would have. Like I said, you guys are tied to the hip, so just checking. Well, um, so Pat, I'd love to talk with you. Okay. We were we were gonna do it off air, you know, but now I just am exposed. <laughs> but no, it's um, like I like this. This is good stuff. Um, I would have to say, um, even though I even though I do. I do love calling cringe out. I do love calling fuckwads out. And I I am pretty open about like I'm going to say whatever I want and if you're a little bitch, you're being a little bitch. Right. But I think my experience with I think it's mainly Twitter, really, honestly. But my shotgunned experience of very recently, only very recently being on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um I've had to learn how to interpret things because uh, uh, I'm a tardy little boy. I'm a pleb, um, you know, but when it comes to like, so a great example. Uh, everything I've experienced with so so far, and he's a great guy. Cause like I said, Brock and I, we met you guys in real life. Oh my God. Couldn't be more genuine. What I experienced on Twitter though was salt. I experienced a salty little bitch, and that's what I called him out for, even though I love him. Yeah, and, uh, 
I, I, I can tell you, like, he's. Uh, I think what what had happened was, um, he had been attacked. I think he kind of got blindsided by the Worski fan base. Yeah. Um, and it started being like he's his uh his DMs are like there's a eleven hundred unread DMs right now because they're just all just spamming the hell out of no him. No wonder the fucker hasn't answered me. <laughs> yeah, he can't. It's it's like I, I I was on his Twitter the other day. I'm sitting there looking. I'm like, just see this. It's all blue. He just can't get through. Yeah. And, and, he, and basically, they're all just yelling at him. And he's yeah, like, he's like, he's like, he can't sift through all this crap. And he's like, he's getting dogpiled, and he just starts. Uh, and I told him, like, he took a break off of uh, Twitter for a minute. I was, like, I was like, you probably need to, dude. I was like, you're, yeah. you're, you're at this point, you're just getting on there. And it's like you're spending so much time because you, you're in such a defensive mode now because you're getting attacked that you're taking yeah. shots at people that are just talking to you because you're you're misinterpreting something they're saying because you're just swinging at everybody right now. It's like, just simmer down. Um I was like, yeah. we're the we're the jokey guys, and honestly, my Twitter, I spend most of my time just making jokes. I really don't give yours shit. is super clean, and uh, the reason why, like, I brought up what up, Brockus? You're uh, I was literally you're- listening and watching like a, a couple of minutes after you guys had started, <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, where is Brockus? Where you, fucking idiots! I, I I thought about it for a second, like when it it was weird when I was asked where you were, I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, why isn't he here? Like, why didn't this happen? You've got half um, of my favorite fucking channel on, and you think, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to watch this at all. Fuck that. I hate Fat Pat, even though well, I practically I didn't know worship if you were him still in my throne. In your Discord or not. But anyway, it like, I, I love you, honey. We're going to get married in, in a couple weeks, so calm down, okay? I you fucking um, die already. <laughs> Uh, but, I want to bromance yeah. like Fat Pat and Sofang. Sh- sh- you got to get up. A, you got to get up really early in the morning, bromance like that. God damn it! <laughs> I don't. I don't uh, want that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pat. Um, anyway, Pat, we had a. Uh, there was a. I forget what Twitter. Uh, uh, um, um, ugh, thread. I forget what Twitter thread it was, but it was very short. But you and I. Had a back and forth at one point. Right. And um, it was a very nice back and forth. It was a very, like, cordial back and forth. And right. the – I forget exactly we were, what we were, I think was. We, I think we got into it because that was the first time I threw my hat in the ring for any – Yeah, yeah. I, I literally stayed out of everything because I didn't yeah. care. Like, I so don't give a shit. Um, but – because if it's not funny, I don't care about it. And uh, – but I remember we, we were having the, the back and forth about uh, – the dog piling and and, and, the, and the that now it's it, Twitter is no longer a proper platform and making uh, response videos is, it, it needs to be immediate in the way that that's that whole, right yeah that it needs to be uh, you need to go get in the in the ring and, and fight it out yeah. and it's like all I have seen so far has been someone goes in and onto into somebody else's uh, stream with all their fans and with uh, a couple of their buddies in the stream with them and they dog pile the person. Uh, and, and it starts becoming just uh, throwing insults. And I've seen several, uh, and I'm not going to call it names, but I've seen several people that have, uh, particularly, like I was saying, what Fane's been dealing with, yeah. that they're going after them, but they're not even coming, uh, like, to come after, like, or, so, you know, they're, they're just criticizing surface things. I'm like, wow, so you, you can't argue intellectually. All you can do is mock the way he dresses or, or you know, that you think yeah. he's old or, like, that he's too old for YouTube. You know, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. Fuck. And um, so it got to this, and I was like, I don't mind having a, a discussion about. So I've had actually a couple very lively discussions on my Facebook. At one point, I had uh, had this. I, I triggered an argument. Uh, There's, I have a lot of atheists that are on my Facebook, and it was like, mm-hmm. with that, you you uh, bring in a lot of uh, feminism and stuff too, uh, yeah. because the feminists don't like the Bible because the Bible basically uh, hates women. So. In that great gaining all these atheists that came in, I gained a lot of feminism and and their the SJW points of view on certain things. And I started this one little thread where I had said some someone had, was making this point about how only white people can be racist. That that's the only way to, that that's the only say. And I wanted to argue that you know that's how I am. I wanted to argue that I'm like only white people can. And I, I made the joke. That saying only white people can be racist is like saying only Asian people can experience jealousy. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's you, you can't you, and then we had this back and forth. All of a sudden, I it, this thread went on for four or five days on my on my uh just on my Facebook, and it, it was go- hundreds of comments, and it was like going this people going back and forth, they're battling the call, and I had to keep jumping in occasionally and stop it because I was like, when it comes to name calling, you're not having a, a conversation anymore. You're just name yeah. calling and bashing each other, you're getting defensive, and that's not really useful. I was like, your piece of shit. I was like, I was like, uh, you know, because w- what we were having was there was a problem. W- it seemed to be its uh, definitions. A lot of people were saying that power is what allows it to be. Otherwise, uh, power is what makes it racism. Otherwise, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just pre- it's just prejudice. And I went, well, if you yes, if you add that little nomer onto uh, that power inflicts, and that you've decided that white equals power, then fine. Then that then that if that's your reality, then fine. I was like, I understand your side now. I disagree with it completely. As long as you can be cordial in the conversation, then what's the point? That's fine. I mean, that's that's why we. I mean, that's partially what we liked about uh, YouTube in the first place. We wanted to have that conversation. I want to have that back and forth. But when yeah. it just seems to be coming in this this like name calling, you know, and it, it's it. Doesn't and seem shots to be, fired kind of shit. Yeah, it's like you're you're um, taking shots at someone's channel instead of because you don't like their content. It's like well, if you don't like their content, then don't watch their shit. But like at this point, you're not arguing with the that's person a great anymore. Point. You're criticizing what they decide to do on YouTube. Yeah. And yes, that is that is a great point. If, I want to I want to single that out. And, and and if you're what if what you're criticizing is the points of view that they're making on their channel, that's fine. But if yeah. all you're doing is just mocking. You're, you're, you're that like that. yeah that, that was the same thing when i i actually found myself uh defending amy schumer who i fucking hate uh, <laughs> there, after her leather special because i sat through the leather but the night it, it aired i oh, sat through the leather special and i, I, knew I, I look <laughs> my wife at the time just watched train wrecked and thought that you know amy Schumer was really funny she couldn't <laughs> sit through it like she <laughs> liked Amy Schumer, and now it's like she won't even listen to the bitch. And I'm like, really? I was like, I sat through the whole thing because I, I needed to. I need to sit down and just watch this. No, I didn't. But um, as a <laughs> well, as a comedian, though, it's, oh, fair I, enough. I'm, like, yes, I'm more yeah. I'm more intrigued by seeing somebody's. But I, I got a new. Screen. I can see the curiosity. And I had to I had to sit through it and pick it apart and then I got on the stream and everyone wanted to ye- yell about Amy Schumer and I said no 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 I was like everyone don't you I don't get, yes I think it was a poor choice in clothing. I don't care about her weight. Or like that. Just, it wasn't a good outfit, period. But I'm not a fashion uh, fashionista. I don't give a shit. If that's what she decided to go with, fine. Uh, bad choice, though. Um, but I can critique the formula and this, that, and the other and the cadence. Uh, and, and I actually started defending Amy Schumer at one point while people were attacking. I said, yo, you don't even know what you're attacking. You're just attacking that you, just, you don't think she's funny. I was like, she has an audience. She has people that like her. So whether you think she's funny, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> but um, but you can speak for yourself on, on your own points. And that's why I, I kind of thought like we used to do point counterpoint videos. That used to be what we were doing yeah. on YouTube is that someone would make some point. Sargon would always make a counterpoint to Anita or something like that. And then you know, we would all watch it. And then, you know, that would be that, that was the stimulus. That was the entertainment. But now it's like the the streaming is is, is the only thing that's worth doing now. You, you can't just take a sit back. And think about how you want to phrase your argument, how you want to put it together, how you want to piece it together, how you, what you want to say, and try to be uh, specific. Yeah. Because now they just our... want you, they want to catch you off guard. That way you might slip up and just, you know, give give them some something. And it's like, yeah, well, that's what our that's what our back and forth was about on Twitter. And um, like you made a lot of excellent points, but what I guess, like, uh, for lack of a better term, Pat, just to trigger you, I'll say. In our back and forth, you kind of got me woke uh, in a way. But uh, I was defending, like, I didn't like the accusation that live is live stream is the way to do it now. And the single videos count uh, point counterpoint, as you put it, that they, have, <coughs> that they have no place or functionality in arguments anymore. And I completely disagree with that. I, obje- I think it's objectively wrong. And I think I mentioned something about that. And then you and I had a back and forth on that. And as the back and forth happened, after I had that, is is when like for me, I like my blood. I love my blood to boil, but I, I started boiling it less. I started like calming down, calming the fuck down. And um, so for me, like that was a very constructive back and forth that that actually helped me see things a little more clearly. 
But what I will say too is, God damn, do I love some some motherfuckers getting to lo- into a live stream ring? Yeah, and I mean, go, I, I and going and going at it. Hold on, hold on, and going at it. I love that shit, and I've been watching Andy Worski for years. I hopped on the Kumite when he had average of eighty viewers and was still talking directly to people in chat. Mm-hmm. So I, I like I've been experiencing this stuff pretty much from the get go. Huge fan, love the shit. Love the shit show aspect. I love when it does get serious and they do make good points. But what I saw, and this is genuine, you made that point of it of like, why would you insult people who are just doing the, why are you insulting the part of their video that is the part where it's exact, like where it's, they're doing exactly what they want to do. That doesn't make any sense. And you have to admit when the shots started getting fired, you can say what you want now about what's going on, but when the shots started getting fired, it was at first overwhelmingly out of favor for people like Andy and Tonka. It was out of nowhere. Fuck this shit. This is bullshit. Why? They're doing it and they well, love I, it. Yeah, I don't. Well, it wasn't. I wasn't hearing so much the good critiques. Quartering kind of got there. A few others kind of got there. But the mass, the vast majority of it, from my from my balcony, was shots being fired at like you're you're platforming alt right people on on the show. No, I'm not. Okay, well we just hate the format anyway. Blood sports is dumb, and that's where it started like culminating. And sure, Andy Spurgs, but I think what most people have been missing in all of their criticisms of blood sports, whether you like this reality or not. I think all kinds of videos have their place, Mm -hmm. but everyone is skipping over the fact that Tonka and Andy cry about it all day. They're fucking entertaining guys. Oh yeah. So fucking entertaining. They're so fucking fun. My critique wasn't, um, but that's not entertaining. It's, it's their own. No, it's that I was seeing so much of it from so to the point where I was like, Guy, please, okay. and I know you've like explained. Well, the, about the, so fame, I, I can, I can, like, I'll, I'll, I'll delve dude. in, I'll delve in a little bit more. Um, Faye, as far as Faye goes, I mean, he can defend himself. I, I, I don't need to defend that guy. Um, I, I know that it was like one initial tweet that he made that was about the overarching umbrella of of the community. Primarily talking about the the viewers, the interaction with the viewers, not the commentator or, or the, uh, the the creators themselves. But everyone knew that he was that this this thought process that he had on Twitter and this tweet had been aimed at Warski because at that point Warski was starting to catch fire from all these other people. So they just they said, "Oh, he's getting a knife under the sheets from you know his buddy Fane," and so. Worski start, you know, at that point is doing the same, same thing you were saying that Fame was doing that he was just on Twitter just punching everyone. Worski swinging at people because he he was getting dogpiled by he felt like a lot of people at once, and all of a sudden and he was and, and he was you know I'm not I'm not saying that his his reaction wasn't like what some of them would do if they felt like they were getting dogpiled yeah, and he so spurred out too like a bitch yeah and he spun Everyone out of control being a bitch in my opinion. and it was like he, when Fane's tweet came out and it was a very like I've seen the tweet and, but the thing was it spawned a bunch of, of comments after it, after Andy got tagged into it. And that went on for a few days. Well, after that happened, Andy started from blood sports, blood sports. Uh, and it was like, it was just, it was such an open comment. He started calling, you know, calling him a pussy and a, and a faggot and all this shit. Like that's all he would do. And I was like, and I was like, "What the dick joke guys, how the hell is he taking something? You know, some, especially the tweet, that, like the initial tweet was such a, really light comment um, as far as I, I was concerned. It wasn't about him, but it wasn't not about him. I, I really, I do say that the comment was definitely, Andy was on the mind when he said it, uh, when he tweeted it, but it wasn't directed at Andy. And, there, and then Andy's argument was, why didn't you at me? I'm like, you found out about it anyway, so what does it matter? <laughs> and at this point, you're on his, uh, your uh, fades on his radar. Does it matter now? <laughs> like, uh, but regardless, I guess there's there's some etiquette that uh, the the lessons weren't taught properly to a uh, fane or something. But the <laughs> the, uh, uh, the thing was, I think it was just it started being where the the form of entertainment uh, of the blood sports and and, and Worski Live 
it's clearly there. It's that's fine. Whatever, whatever the, the case is, whether I find it entertaining or not, it doesn't matter. He's obviously got the audience. The audience is huge right now. Um, and he doesn't let you forget it. He's number five on the internet. Um, so when I, when I see stuff like that, it's like, okay, that's, it's fine. That's entertaining. It, you've got an audience. That's, that's good. But we're still, we are a commentary community and, and we critique. We've always critiqued. And all of a sudden now it's like, wait, I'm not allowed to make a critique on what I'm watching or what I'm seeing or where I'm seeing the, the trends that are happening in, in the community. Um, <laughs> I don't I think want... that was the point, though. I think the point was that, and, and again, I was there with this. This is why I have to reevaluate a lot of shit after we mm-hmm. had our back and forth. But from a lot of people's uh, uh, view, it wasn't the critique. It was, I bet we know where this is coming from. This doesn't feel like it's coming from how we would critique SJWs. This feels like it's coming from people being a little pissy and salty. Maybe seeing the super chats, maybe seeing the views. And I know it's a controversial thing to throw out there, but I still think that's true to a point. Well, I there might think, be. There might if be. If they stuff. weren't making them super chats, you know, we'd be shutting the fuck up about this blood sport shit. I don't know. I don't know. If honestly, they weren't making think, them views, I, no. I know that. I know that. I mean, I can at least say for 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 my side, and at least for Poison Well, no, uh, that, the 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 numbers in the super chat mean absolutely nothing to me. Uh, Fair uh, enough. And that's not what the the initial critique was. Uh, it was it was a, it was a direction that we were seeing. Um, obviously, I you know me, I can get bored to tears very quickly when it comes to politics. So I mean, just kind of go whatever, and it's you know. And honestly, at the end of the day, you know, what, 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 whatever Andy decides to talk about and who he decides to talk to, like an ethno state ain't going to happen. They could talk all day about it. It ain't going to get voted in. And it's it's the it's the uh, frenzy that's going on about it. That's yeah. that seems to be tr- like so. Who cares? The, no, the alt right uh, uh, that are trying to be, you know, trying to find their just in, and they're trying to find a scientific way to try to to be you know in, intellectual about it and try to make like use science. They want to use science to an extent, and then they want to like like breed out a certain like it's like wait you 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 trust science you use science to to make these uh, delineations and genomes and all that stuff. But then after that, you're like, but then we have to just separate because we got to breed it out because oh sickle cell. Did we, did we say that? And that's a dumb argument. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, so there's nothing wrong with the conversation. Talk all you want. It's great entertainment. It's very silly, I think. Uh, to you know, but it's. When you see that people want to have a back and forth immediate in front of people, it'd be mm. better if they was a little more formulated, like with a like an actual debate would be, opposed to it seems to be like just flinging shit at each other, you know. And that's and, that's another that's another claim that I hear gets thrown out around a lot, and I have to say that gets thrown around by people who aren't watching these streams as dedicatedly mm-hmm. as someone like me. And I love all kinds of entertainment. Uh, Brock has even turned me on to you guys, and I have loved your content too. I've even told Sophane a couple times uh, when mm. I think you guys have like masterfully edited edit, edited a video. But what like I've heard the claim of like not having you know a proper debates, and what Andy hosts most of the time is pretty fucking proper. I mean, I don't see anybody else doing something like that. It's pretty fucking calm for the most part. There's a little blood sports dabbled in there. And then when it comes to the Kumite, well, all hail the golden age of radio. It's back. Why are we bitching? Like, let him uh, fucking yell at people. Let him yeah, call people so, cunts. Uh, uh, I don't know if the, this point was ever made uh, when I went away to take care of my dog. Um, but I back in the like the 90s and stuff, when there was a the whole atheist movement, one of the things that was very popular going around the internet was the debates, like Christopher Hitchens and mm-hmm. Daniel Dent and all like these people. They're all the late Hitchens. I know, and they, these guys would have some pretty epic debates. But the most annoying part of those debates was actually the moderator, because they, <laughs> they would stop it and say, "Like, as we get this back and forth going, he's like, I want to keep going, and then they just won't let him." Well, we're out of time. We have to move it to the next part. Yeah, just. Oh. I, I, no, I, I'm like I said, I, and and the comparison to Jerry Springer is like, well, sure, but Jerry Springer is still on the air; it's still entertainment. So, um, 
I, I, I don't criticize the, the, the format or, or, or how they want to do it. That's, that's totally their, their bag. And we, Fane and I have already talked about, it. we're going to be doing a Kumite. I wish our schedule, a schedule is a little looser. It's just not. Fuck off. No, you're not really. Yep. So when, when that, it, will be, it will be, <laughs> that will be happening, but, uh, it's like, honestly, I was out of town for a week and I've been back. It's like, and we're trying to get, you know, so we want to get a couple of video stuff out of uh, the video, video ideas that we have planned already <laughs> out, of, out of the way. And then we're going to do it before, you know, we've been, we've talked to Tonka and all that stuff. Everything's cool. Everything's great. Uh, That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So like, it's, uh, it's I, not, it's not like, you know, I don't like, uh, the, the, that's the other big Christmas really annoying thing is everyone keeps saying, Oh, Faye's such a pussy. He doesn't want to get in there. He's scared of the chat. It's like, no, he's commented about the chat and he's, you know, made his, his direct criticisms, you know, at, because he's pretty salty. Um, but no, he, he's by no means uh, scared to, to get in there because what's going to happen? Nothing <laughs> like it's, you know, you get bitched out. And honestly, um, you know, if we if we end up the, uh, in there with uh, with Andy and stuff, I still consider Andy a friend. Fane does too. I mean, we have there's zero ill will towards to uh, towards Andy at all. I think there was, uh, and I know Andy's as misunderstood shit too. But Andy's even uh, said that he's 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 like I still love So Fane. He'll follow it up with like a faggot or a <laughs> bitch though. And right, kind of hurts the whole point. But right. um, I just but... wanted to get across to you, Pat. That after our back and forth, like again, I think in 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 conversation, sometimes people listen more to my tone than my words. And mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is, like, it it helped me realize, like, I got shotgunned into this mess of Twitter. It's pretty chaotic, Twitter. I don't know if anyone right now. It's the wild it's west. Intense. Everyone's got a gun. Yeah, pulled. it's pretty it's... intense. And I got caught up in the fucking wave. And mm -hmm. I made. Um, I, I, I don't think all my assumptions are wrong, but I made a lot of wrong assumptions and I really rode the fucking wave and I really let my blood boil and the Kumite got to me and then I calmed the fuck down as soon as I was like, oh yeah, there's something called conversation and this nice guy Pat is willing to have one with people. Well, that, that, that what am I whole, fucking doing? And then that I was stepped the whole back. thing when we did when we did VidCon and that was uh what I, I, I will give the uh, a level of credit to to Andy, he stuck to his word to to an extent. Yeah. Um, when the, the whole community, particularly, I, I will say that the Lazy Green was that that purge uh, of the. It's fine to talk to the other side, and then our side decided to drop our weapons a little bit and decided to stop spitting venom because it became just popular. Just all all you have to do is spit venom at SUWs, and you're gonna get a bunch of views and subscribers. Who cares? Yeah, because that's what people want. They want to see a blood sports from one's perspective. And now it's it's getting because since VidCon, the willingness to want to talk is there that we want to have that back and forth, and, and the audience wants to see that back and forth. Um, and really, I guess the best way overall is to do it live, um, unless you wanted to try to record a private conversation with the person and then and then edit it and let them agree that that's fine to edit or whatever. I think would also be very nice. But with the the uh, live stream is is especially with the way. Uh, YouTube is is uh, using, I think, live streaming as a way to make up for the ad apocalypse because they mm. get a chunk of that sweet sweet uh, ad money. What is um, it like thirty percent? Yeah, they cut out a chunk of your super chat, so they're like, well, if someone's live streaming, we're going to move them right to the top of everyone's subscription feed. So you, the longer you live stream, the more likely your audience will start to show up over time, and it'll it'll move your your ratings up, and it'll hold you up here all day. So like. With Tonka doing you know these live streams or Andy doing these long live streams, it is definitely feeding the live stream format because if they can't get the advertisers to give the money, they're gonna let the super chat uh, help pay for the for that loss of income, and so they've allowed live streaming to be a benefit to the creator to use that to uh, encourage uh, the behavior and uh, of what they're gonna do on their channel, and with that, Andy said that you know. Even though, even with the fallout with uh, Francesca Ramsey, he stuck to his word. He wanted to have more conversations, and he's yeah. definitely had those conversations, yeah. um, a lot of them for a couple yeah. months now. Uh, that's that's great, um, <laughs> but at this point, the, that's all he's having, and uh, yeah, which is fine. Still, that's you know, it's, it's his channel. He do what the fuck he wants, um, and and I think everyone, because honestly, we've. 
shifted our content around to do what we want. We I, want to do shit that makes us laugh. <laughs> I it. like this new format. And you mentioned that you and Sofane, I don't want to put words, words in your mouth or assume I know what you guys are building because it could be something very innovative. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that you and Sofane kind of working on a little kumite of your own. I will, I will say right now, that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see different flavors of this format. We have the uh, the alt right Nazi flavor. Thank you, Andy. We have uh, the uh, 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 Howard Stern flavor, the Kumite. Well, we will um, be. We will actually be on Tonkas. We'll be on Tonkas to, uh, Kumite. I think it might have to be a special Saturday show, though, but just because of scheduling. Oh, dude, but, you're making me come. That's gonna yeah, be awesome. So uh, that's what I said. We we've been talking to Tonka about it. It's it's. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, see, that's what I mean. Then is by like. Everything about Twitter, it, it'll lead you to believe one thing, and you got to take a step back. I mean, again, I'm still a little bit of a shitlord, and I like to call out stupid cunts and cringe people. But aside from that, like, I was being genuine when I think I, I, I think I posted something to tag you or so, fate, whatever. But it was about like I'm genuinely kind of getting depressed. I think this is psychological. Like, this can psychologically mess with you because I love poisoning the well. Right. I love these creators. And I'm like, wait a minute. But then crazy ass people who follow Kumite say hate poisoning the well. What? Well, I don't that, want to hate them. Yeah, that's, no, a, that's I think Sophane might be a little cringy, but maybe there's something more to this. And then all it takes is talking to you for it, fucking two seconds and you go, Yeah, there's a reason. Yeah, so enjoy enjoy, enjoy the show. That's that's the other side of it. Enjoy yeah. the show. Maybe there's a reason we haven't been on yet. Maybe yeah. there's, there's a very particular push that we're waiting to do. Um, and and I, I don't want to, I don't want to like, I'm going to use, yeah, don't, don't, I'm going to yeah. use, I'm going to use Fane's line on this, but I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give any, anything away, but fair enough. Uh, if you're going to go into a wrestling match, do you want to be the guy that, that, you know, they na named Steve Anderson that goes running in there, you're wearing red tights and then just get his ass kicked by the undertaker. Or do you want to be on WrestleMania with you know your own audience and your own persona and be ready to actually go in there and have a big match? I mean, there's no point running in there and just getting dogpiled and your push side and you were just the flavor of the hour and then then they just move on. Then that's that sucks. Like you want to See, work. That's up. a really good point too. You want to pump up that audience. Of, yeah, and like, it's cause... the audience is doing. It's really good. I'd be scared. Like like. I don't want to use the word scared because I don't want to make it sound like Sophie's scared. I, I now see where you're coming from in that, like, um, when they create or cultivate an environment like that, it's not anymore about being a pussy. Now it's just about being tactful because you care about your reputation. You care about your fans and you just nailed it. What if like he could have, if, if he just rushed in there, like Andy wanted, he's going to be flavor of the week. Uh, and, by no like by 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 no attempt on his own, just doing his best. Mm. Based on that audience, though, still gonna be nailed as like, oh, you got your ass kicked. Yeah, you it, it won't that. matter. It, yeah, and it won't matter. It, and then and then what if that comes over and and affects your channel? What if instead of eleven 1 hundred DMs, now he's got twenty five hundred? <laughs> like maybe be tactful about this. That's a really good point. You know, like hey, I can't I can't object to that. You know, yeah, New so Warriors. Also, <laughs> if, if you've ever if you've ever seen our channel, the uh, production is high, but the content put output is slow. <clears throat> so when people want the Kumite now, why don't y'all? Why didn't Fane just jump in this morning? It's like, well, let us get let's get ready, and uh, and, and we'll we'll go in there. But no, as far quality as quality over quantity, yeah. And I was like, we want to go in there and have a really good show, and and make sure that because honestly, I want to make I want to put because uh, what I've said, I said it on some other stream. I might have been on the YouTube Saint stream. I said, I just want my Andy back. Like, th he's my buddy. Dude, you're going to make so, me cry. Stop. Um, and, <laughs> and honestly, the audience, as much as the blood sport's awesome, everyone loves to just see when, you know, the, the, the Undertaker gets back in the ring with Kane and <laughs> woo, you know, that's what you want. Oh, dude, you're going to make me So cry. it's, it's, awesome. uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's more, that's more important to me. And, and honestly, at the end of the day, and I, I say this to my wife all the time, I was like, after, you know, I uh, get off a stream or I get done making a video and I look at the numbers and everything. When I close my computer, all this shit goes away. My my immediate focus is my family and the people around me, fame. So to me, uh, allowing this little shit on the internet uh, boil up as something that 
means it means nothing to me when I close my computer. It doesn't affect my life at all. So I, I don't, but I do enjoy the show. I, I t- tend to always want to be a showman. And uh, same with Fane, uh, that we really want to make sure that I r- I'd rather be the top audience member or top with the biggest audience you know, coming in for that uh, than, than to just kind of run in there. I felt like uh, when Jeff had the doxing scandal happen and then he jumped in way too early and didn't know what facts were going to be thrown at him. And he got railroaded uh, real fast. And he opened his mouth a little bit before he was ready. And I think it hurt him. Um, Jeff also was just, he's my friend. Uh, but he got beaten up by all of us uh, on, on uh, the situation. And I think jumping into a live stream unprepped is a bad move. And it looked really bad for him. Well, also the Rick roll. Fine. The, <laughs> also the Rick roll in the hour long apology. Didn't yeah, so good. I was like, that, yeah, the fact that he had to do that was like, take a second. But he was trying to, I think he just kind of jumped in too, too, too quick on a, a subject. And that was the same thing. Uh, we want to make sure we get all of our ducks in a row. And uh, we want to make sure this this comes across really well. Um, hashtag, I want my Andy back. <laughs> <Because> I, <laughs> That's that, the best, dude. But uh, no, thank you for discussing this with me. Because honestly, like the back and forth on Twitter it was a little bit of a spark, you know, and I took a step back. This conversation, like, it really is going to change. It has changed how I'm looking at this. And, you know, sometimes you get that venom in you, man. You get too fucking That's, excited. There's a, there's a bloodlust. The That's what down. it is. The, the bloodlust right now is everyone's, everyone's in the, in the, the arena. And they're, in the the thumbs, they're on the their thumbs down. They want yeah. the, the gladiator. They don't care who wins. They want to see gladiators yeah. cutting each other's heads off. And, and the I blood get lust, The bloodlust belongs in the ring. And it's a great time. It's a great time in the ring, man. But it belongs in the ring. Can we kind of sort of work on then, like you said, you shut off the computer and it's done. Can we mm-hmm. kind of work on maybe like you walk away from the kumite or the kumite is over and then you just kind of calm the fuck down? Can well, we maybe work on that? Just a little bit. That's the other side uh, that the audience maybe sometimes forgets is that there are people on the side, other side of these cameras. Um, and they're they're calling, you know, particularly people that don't even know Bane at all, that they've just discovered who he is. But because they, they like the Kumite or because they like Andy, he's just catching this flag from people that have no clue uh, of the person on the other side. It's like, well, I know that this is entertainment for all of you guys, but at the end of the day, these are just, this, this is a guy that lives his life and has his house and has his little fluffy dogs. And then he's like, he's like, Jesus Christ, I can't get on the internet anymore, which I love the internet because I'm just going to get called a faggot a bunch. <laughs> it's like, so yeah. let, let the bloodlust be, be, uh, be warranted, but don't understand it does affect people's lives uh, or could affect some of if, if Aaron actually took anything, Aaron, Aaron, if Aaron ever took anything to heart, I think it would be Facts. worse. Oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> just Dude, Google, I... Google Sophane and it's, it's right there. Shut up, Anthony. Dude. Shut the fuck up, Zell, you fucking piece but, of yeah, forget. You if, actually don't uh, have people know if, uh, if Fane, uh, if Fane ever took it, honestly, some, the, the Sofane character is 20 something years old. So he has been called all sorts of names. He's fine. He'd be all right. Oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. We, we, we got a, a $5 super chat. Oh, money. It is for, it's a $5. Hold on. It's uh, from American Phoenix. $5. God damn it. Fucking computer. Hey y'all, I'm looking for advice. I'm buying a new gun this week. I'm torn between a Glock 20 10 millimeter or a Ruger 45 to match my current one. Suggestions. Hmm. I'm a 45 four. fan. So smosh. But I'm also much more into the uh, wheel gun because you don't want to drop your brass in case you gotta gotta bust out after you pop some shots. Yeah, me personally, I would go with the 45. I don't know why. It's just a personal favorite. Hey, hint of shrimp. You know, like go fuck your mother. It's not about that, you fucking douche. Yeah, I call people out in the fucking chat. Uh, but, but, I, I, okay, Pat. Get the and, fuck off the internet. Uh, we, already, we already did, uh, we did a bullying video. Go to Poisoning the Well and look up uh, internet bullying or cyber yeah, bullying. Yeah, I'm I just going to rewatch all your you, shit again. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they know that you, like, um, um, what's it called? Uh, take jokes. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. Hey, also, if you want to see Oscar, uh, Oscar Jungel's fucking, uh, I call him Chungel, but, you know, it's because he's chunky. If you want to see his butthole, also watch that video. What's yeah. wrong with you? What is wrong with you? 
We're, about, you, we're two weeks from marriage. You talk about buttholes? Other dudes hey, buttholes? Are you hitting on Pat? Are you hitting on Pat? I'm always you hitting on Pat. From, you stay the fuck away from Pat. I want to do dirty things to him. Like, drink. That, uh, okay, go on. Who's was, the gay no, you were going to do dirty things. Shit. <laughs> Traps are not gay and neither am I. Dude, you're the hairiest fucking trap I've ever seen. <laughs> I am. That's a trap. Motherfucker, that is a, a full-grown man with a beard. How is that well, a trap? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Pat, I hope we have, like, I know I know we've exhausted this topic. I hope, um, I hope, uh, if I was uh, a bloodlusted dick that, um, you know, I, I, no hard feelings or anything. I, oh, I no, probably no. was, I probably was a dick a few times, especially to Sophane. When I was like, come on, man, stop being fucking salty. And I had the blood in me. But um, but I love you guys. And you guys still all stick to this till the day I die. You guys gotta, are the most gotta, genuine people. You gotta be I've salty when you're trying to build up the persona. You gotta, <laughs> gotta, you gotta get the... Uh, you, no one liked The Rock until he came out there with salty. So... <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But you tell Sofane uh, we love him too. But yeah. Sophie he's he's that, a good guy. All right, now that you've apologized, Pat, I want to do uh, the voice over. Like, I, I want to do you guys' uh, promo video. Right. Like, no. Two warriors forge their, their skills in the, the arena of salt. <laughs> their yeah, weapons yeah, are made uh, in mountain. Dog and Beardy are already a thing. Hey, you're hearing a fucking waiting list. Hey, Schmeckle, it's nice to hear you. Shut your mouth. We got a $5 super, super chat. It's from American Phoenix. I do love a wheel gun. I've got a Ruger three screw three fifty seven. Nice. I'm just looking for a good pig gun. I mm. do love my forty five. I just already own one. Samaj, moan, you slut. Samaj, I'll moan for him because he's not here. God damn it! <laughs> okay, never do that again in bed. <laughs> <clears throat> but I want to do Pat and Selfane's promo. Some some cringy ass three hundred shit. I'm about it. I'm about that life. Bitching. Yes. Fuck, also, shut up. Where, you're where, nothing where, to pat. You're shut nothing. the fuck up, Zell. When the fuck <laughs> are you guys gonna do the parody uh, of Careless Whispers for uh, Roy? Um, I I uh, I have gotten the uh, <laughs> saxophone already. Yes. The so, fuck is that? Oh, well, dude, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brass instrument that you blow stop, through. Stop it, Pat. What is the careless? What's the careless whisper thing going on? What are you talking about? Uh, okay, did you ever see the video where they collabed with uh, very, uh, very nearly viral? Fuck, did I? I don't know. Okay, well, you know, anyways, with my memory, you know, with my memory, I probably did. I don't know. Probably. It was a terrible video. The, the, the poisoning the well. You it, fucking I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what happened. Is that I, 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 uh, I allowed Fane to write that video. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> was, hey, you put the fucking YouTube hoe in charge. What, what ended up happening is he came back. Uh, he was going to. He was coming back from India. He had two weeks. He had to be in India, and then he had to come back uh, through New York. Had to spend a couple days in New York. And incidentally, uh, Roy from Very Nearly Viral was hanging out with the uh, uh, day <coughs> and over in Boston, I think. And then he came over, met uh, Fane, and they recorded their whole uh, bit at uh, Times Square because it was the best looking place. It looks very New York. And uh, they filmed this. And like all of a sudden, I get this phone call right when uh, Fane gets to New York that he'd been tells me all the story that he's heading to New York and he's meeting up with Roy and they're shooting this video. And here's the premise on. Sorry, what are you shooting? And then he uh, he shoots it. Then he has uh, Fane goes up to uh, Canada for another week. He comes back, and by the time he gets back, uh, Lacey and Roy have sent me their half of a video. So it's just a bunch of takes of of their yep. stuff. Okay, I remember. The and then video now. and then all of a sudden, I have to record my part of a video yeah. and I'm like, wait, what, what's my, <laughs> what's my motivation? What am I doing? <laughs> and so only thing I could think of to do is just go way over the top and just <laughs> that Pat has a massive codependency issue and just like, do you know, just melt down? And, and cause that I was the only one I felt that didn't have much of a character <laughs> in the whole thing because it wasn't written for me. And, uh, by the time I, and then I had to do all the editing. So I edited both videos together. There's, 
a different take in, in each video. So like though the videos as a whole, they have different bookends, I guess is what I call them. You know, our story and then their story, but the middle is pretty much the same. But in the middle, there is just one joke change. There's one shift and one joke. Uh, just because I liked the different takes. So that was the video. So I ended up having to edit two like 15 minute long videos that I didn't fucking write and then send it off. I'm like, there you go. But right. okay, but to your abilities, I swear the best parts of that video are actually with you uh, just before you get on the phone with Lacey and when you're on the phone with Lacey. Because oh, well, when it cuts to you and you're putting the Lacey makeup on, going, <laughs> yes. I fucking lost my shit. I dropped the phone. I was watching it on. I was like, I don't fucking believe it. Oh my god, that was my first introduction to very, very nearly viral. I think I watched that video with you, Brockus. Now I'm, I remember that because I was like, I was like, who are these two? And then I subscribed to their channel. They're they're the they're the British version of uh, Poison the Well. They're just slightly less gay. Yeah, pretty uh, much. It, I have like a I have I don't a know about for Lacey. <laughs> Roy, but, Roy is really fucking gay though. But yeah, the the uh, the. When we were doing that that video, the the crossover video, we did a uh, basically because I didn't know what I'm supposed to film. He just Fane gets home and just says, "Okay, you have to film your parts, and here's their stuff." And I'm like, so I'm just trying to like watch their stuff and then trying to find something that my character is supposed to be reacting to. And so I just started just doing weirder and weirder shit, and just trying to see if I get Fane to laugh. If I could get him laughing off screen, that's why there's a lot of parts where I had to fix the audio because he was. Giggling, having to, having to leave the Who's studio. That sound like Brockus. The makeup. Oh, that sounds like you and me when we fucking filmed our <laughs> shit. <laughs> God damn it! I made him laugh so fucking much on this one video we had done. He couldn't <laughs> keep the fucking camera straight. Like he, the the scene was, he turns to our friend, and he's talking to him, and he goes out of the room for a second, then he comes back in. And when the camera pans back to me, I'm drunk and in my underwear. And he can't <laughs> fucking keep the camera straight. He's laughing way too fucking hard. We had to do like 16 takes. He, he well, couldn't keep his shit it was together. All, it was all improv by Brockus. And you try, you try and keep your shit together when you have seen Brockus. Imagine him in his underwear opening up a freezer door and going, It's freezing in this freezer. Why don't you have a horse? You need to get a horse. They're good to ride on, and I the camera's fucking like vibrating from my laughter. <laughs> yeah, tripods are, are where it's at. <laughs> we didn't have any of that they're shit. The, they're the future. <laughs> oh look, very nearly viral doesn't have a tripod. They just prop their camera up on like some boxes and shit. Yeah, their <laughs> stuff's so cheap, but it's awesome. It like gives it like that's a, that's a, they they, they just quality. focus on the writing and and their points, and then they just move on. Yeah, it's uh, I we got it like Fane and I got in this more because of the photo. We were already doing photography, and we wanted to. We just liked YouTube videos so much. We're like, well, shit, all this camera equipment shoots like 1080p and stuff, and we just like watching the production, just seeing an idea written down and then have it translated onto a screen and it being. Yeah, you know, I, I look still I still stick with the opinion that what was it the um, you you like. Last time we had talked on 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 proper villains, you mm. were you were mentioning like, oh, we might do like a little bit of a response to Logan Paul and the Suicide Forest thing, just a thirty second bit, whatever. The video was like what a minute and a half, maybe it ended up being, and um, like because uh, I have a little editing experience, I I do appreciate video like like production quality to a to an extent, and I got to tell you that video right there was when I was like okay, they've nailed it. Like, I felt like you guys were creeping up on perfection. And even though it was only a minute and a half, and it might not seem like that big a deal, the timing, the pace was perfect. That was, And I told Sofane, like, you guys fucking nailed it there. They, uh, honestly, y'all were the reason I we actually went ahead and did the video. I, we, I always kind of felt like we were kind of past that mark. Everyone already done their videos on it. We're like, us. Oh. Fuck it, time's passed, and, and all I had was this one joke. Um, just picturing Bane in the foreground and me just blurry in the background with just my legs hanging. It's just that vision <laughs> made me laugh. Because uh, it was really dark humor and inappropriate. <laughs> like, clearly, we didn't learn anything from the... the <laughs> uh, but that video was just what... Um, I don't know if I told... I, I mentioned this in one of the streams, I think. Maybe it was... 
But Fane in that video, his Oscar winning delivery about suicide <laughs> was not actually any acting on his part. Mm. Uh, he was fighting for his life because about a minute, two minutes before that delivery, uh, he almost killed himself. <laughs> not what the fuck? Um, when we decided to shoot this, originally <laughs> we were going to shoot this uh, outside. Um, so I could kind of, uh, which uh, very nearly viral did one, I think it was uh, where he was hanging yeah. on a tree. Yeah. And we were going to do something very similar, uh, even though our video was out like two days before there. <laughs> no big deal. Um, but <laughs> fucking asshole. Uh, I was going to just hang from a tree because that was going to be the. We wanted to re recreate the, the the image, um, but I had no shoot days. He we obviously work, and he had no free time during uh, the week at all. And we wanted to get it out, and I said, "Let's just do it in the studio." But I had no way to hang from the ceiling. There was no unless I grabbed the ceiling fan or something. Um, so I came up with this brilliant idea to take two eight foot uh, A frame ladders, right, and they're just off screen, and then put this big. Uh, two by six board across the top. So it made this, this little thing. So you, he's framed uh, uh, underneath the ladder uh, and the boards. And I would just lay my belly, my fat belly on the board and allow my feet to just dangle. And then at the right proper moment, I would just I'd pick myself up and drop down. Well, I set it all up. And when I step up on the chair, you can, I'm now standing up here and this, this thing's eight feet up in the air. I'm like, I was like, this is a little sketchy looking because it, it just wiggles back and forth. Nothing's clamped down. There's nothing attached. It's just just uh, gravity holding this shit together. Yeah. And I, I'm looking at him like, this is not, this is sketchy. And he's like, looking at me, he's like setting the camera up. And he goes, just get up there, faggot. And I went, I was like, I don't think so, man. I'm, I think I need to get something else to get up here because I don't think me staying on this chair is high enough because I'm going to have to like really jump up to get up here. And flop over there. So I finally, he just, you know, peer pressures me into doing it. I finally jump up and the whole like thing shifts and, and I bang the board into the wall, but luckily nothing collapses. And I, I step, step back down on this chair and I reset it. I'm like, holy shit. And he goes, well, I didn't think you were going to flop up there like a fish. Like, can't you just be ginger about it? And I'm like, I'm like, and I knew I shouldn't have done this, but I challenged Sophane's ego. And that is the first thing that will get, he'll do anything. Just challenge his ego. Bet you can't do that, you know, and that's all. So I just jumped down. I went, all right, if it's so easy, you go do it. He walks over, steps on the chair, and without even, like, assessing what I was looking at, he just kind of looks around with, like, no self-preservation at all and just jumps to get up on this thing. His feet swing out. He is now parallel with the ground, and he just falls, like, six feet, just falls straight to his back Jesus onto the Christ. cement floor. <laughs> and he's just laying there. And he's like, <laughs> just like, hey, did you get it on video? I know, I know. Look, I had, I wish I had gotten over there because I was actually <laughs> walking back around. I was going to start the camera before he attempted, but he did it like immediately. <laughs> and I didn't. So he just, he's just laying on the floor, breathing. And all I could do is try not to talk. It's just don't say anything because right now it's not a good time for. See, that's what I'm talking about, you know. But I was like, don't say anything. He is in a lot of pain. He's just laying there. His red face. He's. I think he might have collapsed a lung. I was like, he's just. Uh, he's just laying there, <laughs> and finally he mutters out. He mutters out this. He just says, "You may have a point." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So, so he probably he probably and actually I uh, I think he actually cracked two ribs. First oh, he thought geez. he thought it was his back. What? He actually, uh, two ribs on his back, his left and right side, so he can't get comfortable. He hasn't been able to sleep apparently at nights because he can't shift onto one side or it starts to hurt, and he has to like, he has to just lay like pills behind him. He's been very uncomfortable, and so which cracks me up because he just he's an idiot and he's way too old to be jumping up there. What what, what kind of fucking idiot? So anyway, the uh, I just so I gotta get the fuck out of here, and he just sits down. And he delivers what looks like this Oscar winning delivery of like, if you're thinking about committing suicide, it sounds like Sally Struthers, if anybody remembers those videos, uh, commercials, but he just starts, if you all think about doing suicide, you have people that love you. And I'm like, he sounds like he's really serious, but I was like, the problem is he can't breathe because <laughs> <laughs> he just knocked the wind out of himself and he is in pain. 
So he just sat there for another couple of days. So this is the key to getting to getting a, a, an, a, an amazing Academy Award worthy mm-hmm. performance out of Sofane. Beat the shit out of him. Oh yeah, and now he's stunt looking it. for like stunt pads. He wants to like line the studio in these like thick stunt pads, like crash pads. Now I'm he's like, getting all paranoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, why would we need that? He goes, uh, did you see what happened the other night? I'm like, yeah, but we've been doing this channel for like two and a half years, and we've never had a stunt before. And the fact that that is considered a stunt, and you wouldn't be doing that anyway. And so he's trying to he's trying to line the studio now with padding. Well, I mean, <laughs> you might do something stupid again. Oh, by the way, uh, Zell, Kadunt keeps trying to get your attention on this in the chat. She Fuck wants her. to remind you. Of the time that I wore a thong for a video. Yeah, well, oh, God, the thong. The, you know you had a thong and a <laughs> jester hat. Yes. I'll, I'll explain to, 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 to Fat Pat for context, even though he's probably like, please, dear God, no context. No, I just need so, you to send me the link. Um, <laughs> we, got, we, got some, we got some of our old videos hanging around that we could send in a DM form, but uh, – I'm yeah. kind of in them, and I don't want to be doxxed, but we can we can send you the link personally. Yeah, yeah but throw, throw me the link there's, personally. There's one of them that isn't around anymore, and it was about a certain gentleman playing Xbox, and he was very excited about the score he was getting on 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 Halo, but you never see the TV, you just but you do hear the sound effects, and then his friend gets home and watches him playing the game. You get again, you never see the TV. And then his friend walks over and plugs the Xbox into the wall. And you see the bong that's right next to the guy on the chair. And you stop hearing the halo sound effects anymore. And then the Xbox turns on. And the, the, the extremely stoned man goes, holy shit, I beat the fucking game. And then that's when the beautiful Brockus walks around the corner in a thong and a jester hat. And he kneels on the he, he leans against the wall, looks at the stoned guy. The stoned guy looks at him with wide eyes and he goes, Holy shit, you beat the fucking game. And that's the fucking video. It's good. I like it. <laughs> I'm not being condescending. I do. I like it. I, it no, no, I, no. It's uh it's better uh I I don't know, it's better in delivery. I, I like the way I edit um, stuff. It's, I cut it the right the, it's, the funny um, stuff. No, what what I appreciate it. And I know I don't, I don't. I come across as so insincere because I'm just too sarcastic for me. That's when I'm fine. Good. Our, our stuff was amateur shit. Anyway. No, no, no. Okay. look, I have. I can. I wish I could find my first attempt at shooting a skit. Uh, I used to do it on the road uh, when I was touring full time uh, as a comedian. I shot a skit with one of my friends just because um, the my touring buddy, and it's disappeared now, and I don't know. It, it, Maybe it's gone forever. I don't know if I can ever find it, but it was a really bad joke that yeah. did not get across. But what you did was you had a beginning, middle, and end. You had the setting, you had the tilt, and then you had the conflict resolution, and then you had a tag. Perfect. That's perfect. That's 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 the concept of a joke. So the fact that you had all those components, you're way ahead of Amy Schumer. So. Okay, I just uh, uh, I formed like my own like uh, I, I think everyone who does like comedy, they form their kind of their own approach and philosophy to it. Mm-hmm. And my one of my singular rules was you cut to credits at the funniest moment. You never you never continue after the plateau. Yeah, don't don't milk it. Once you got the laugh, I mean, and that's sometimes when Faye and I would get to the end of a, a video and I said, well, that's it. So we, we have this very abrupt sting. That's it. We just left. That's where it's going to leave. It's right there. Uh, I was like, if there's anything funny, we'll just add it in at the end if we really need it. But yeah. that's the joke. Oh, there was one that like maybe maybe in 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 the way I maybe in the way I can deliver it to you. There is one that actually like can still be funny without having to see it. It was the first video we ever did. It was called Murder X. Okay. And the concept of the video. Was I'm, I get in my car after going to Walmart for some groceries. And all of a sudden, Brockus enters the car on the right, on, on the right passenger side. And um, I obviously don't know the guy. He sits in the passenger side. He has his hand wrapped up with his shirt like he's concealing a gun. And he proceeds to rob me of my car. He says, Get the fuck out of the car. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And, um, I'm really afraid, but I don't want to get out of the car. 
And then there's this awkward silence because I realize I do know the guy from school. And I'm like, holy shit, it's, it's what's, I was like, oh my God, it's you. I haven't seen you in so long. And he's like, what? Like Mark? Oh my God, that's you? So we shoot the shit. We're like, oh my God, what are you doing now? He's like, I'm fucking robbing people. That's what I do now. Sometimes I kill them. And I'm like, oh my God, no way. That's pretty cool, dude. You said you wanted to do that in school, didn't you? He's like, yeah, and I'm doing it. I'm doing what I said I'd do. I'm like, that's really cool, dude. And then he cuts off the chatter and is like, but really, I need your fucking car. And I stall for a moment. And then I go, you know, I'm really disappointed in you. And he's like, what? What? And I'm like, you didn't have to yell like that. And he's like, I didn't, I didn't yell. And I'm like, yeah, you got kind of loud right there. And he's like, yeah, but I, I murder people though. And and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to ask nicely if you could just get out of my car. I, I just don't want to look at you right now. I'm really upset with you. And he's like, I didn't mean to yell, but and then I eventually convinced him to get out of the car. And when I drive away is when it clicks in his head. I could have I could have fucking killed the guy. Why didn't I take the car? <laughs> so he just screams and it cuts to credits. You don't know how close that is to a real story that happened. Oh fuck! Um, <laughs> no, I mean it's, no way. it's similar. It's similar. Uh, it wasn't <clears throat> to me. It was uh, to to my comedy partner Matt. Uh, he was he went out. He was we were hammered. I I I blacked out at the hotel. He saw McDonald's across the street that was had a late night menu that was still open, and he walks down there, just stumbles down there, drunk from the hotel. We're in a sketchy part of town because, trust me, comedy clubs do not pay top dollar for your hotel if they even get you a hotel. They will put you in the shittiest, cheapest place they can put you to save money. Oh, and Brox so, and I used, used to just be paid in beers, so that's an upgrade. Yeah, so we – we uh, he, Matt starts heading across the street to McDonald's, and uh, he as, as he's heading back, this guy is following him, and Matt's just yeah, – it's cold. He's got hands in his – Jack and he's walking and the guy pulls a gun on him, but Matt's hammered and apparently does not, it doesn't click to him that a gun is an aggressive move. And the guy says, yo man, give me your wallet. And Matt's like, nah. And the guy goes, man, give me your money. And Matt goes, nah, I need it. And just walked past the guy <laughs> and walked all, it wasn't until he got back into the hotel. And he goes, and he's putting down his, his burger and stuff. And he goes, was that guy robbing me? Like it didn't even. <laughs> like it did, like he didn't. He didn't sober up until he got back oh into his hotel. Oh my god! Oh my god! Goes, Wait, I just told. I just told a guy that had a gun on me. Nah, I need it. And it worked. And then just walked <laughs> off. And he just kind of goes. I want, and he's like, now I want to go talk to the guy. I'm like, because I'm thinking the guy's sitting there holding a gun, going, "What was that?" <laughs> and then the, 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 the guy's like. That the the robber probably went home. He stared at himself in the in, in the mirror and kind of goes, "Give give me your wallet." <laughs> have you ever <laughs> have you ever been like in uh, uh uh in one of those moods where like you're just you're not having a good time and you drive around to like a seedy area and you're in a parking lot and you're like parking to go into wherever whether it's Walmart or Mickey D's. And you just kind of think to yourself, I'm not saying that this like actually happens, but you just kind of think to yourself, if someone were to try to rob me right now, I would do exactly what you just explained. I'm in such, I'm like, I'm not having any of it. If someone came up to me with a shotgun, I'd be like, tomorrow, rob me tomorrow. I'm going to shop right now. Payday's tomorrow. (laughs) Rob me then. Trust me. It's worth it. (laughs) I, I honestly, I would probably up saying something like, if you rob me, you're just going to get all my debt. So <laughs> you're actually doing better than one. me right now, man. <laughs> That's a good one. Magog. Oh. Yeah, Magog's in chat. We got Magog. Yeah. Ass rape! <laughs> just saying. Oh, he's not God. here to do that, so might as well. So, uh, Samaj, what have you been working on lately, sir? Uh, just keeping things clean and tidy so we can sell the house. That's been taking up a lot of my time. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, besides that, I do the odd work here and there, getting some comics done for free comic book day, uh, doing commissions. 
has um has the internet decided to shit on you like it did Schmeckel recently? Why did it no. shit on Schmeckel? The area he lives in, apparently, uh, the internet fucking went out. Oh, oh, oh that. I, thought... <laughs> I read that wrong. I, I've gotten I've gotten used to that. I mean, it, it's happened a couple times. Although Schmeckel, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, uh, how, how's that internet doing? Uh, it's, it's doing fine tonight. Uh, you know, uh, yes, you know you're not I getting... don't know what the fuck happened. Uh, we, we didn't even have bad weather. We just had no internet for some reason. You know you're not getting any credit for this stream, right, Schmeckel? You goddamn whore. You sit, <laughs> uh, you sit there you sit there in your ivory tower and then do nothing, and then you post all over Twitter, I made a great show, guys, on the uh, I, I, uh, That's been the formula the whole time. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I, leave I, leave I sit in the back, <laughs> maybe I'll take a nap. Uh, and I take the credit at the end. He gave us <laughs> as long as you're honest about it, you fuck the <laughs> asshole. As far as I'm concerned, Schmeckel could do fucking what he wants. Set up the stream, let me talk all he all I fucking want. Entertain people, piss people off. I don't give a fuck. He's officially Brockus, my boss now. Brockus, I think this is why we need to be married because now. you you you're too easy on people and let them walk over you. And I'm too much an asshole. We got to come together and compliment each other, man. No. I'm this not is going to happen. Easy. I'm going to touch your pee-pee. It's fucked <laughs> up that Fat Pat has touched your pee-pee, and I have it. This is fucking wrong. It was more of a grazing. You poked it. I want to graze. I'll take a graze. The same. All right. Everyone come to VidCom. I'll just... Uh, VidCom. Come to VidCom. Well, and uh, <laughs> I'll just... <laughs> I'll just you will just stand in line. I'll just ruby rod. I'll wait a bring. No, I want to graze Brockus. He won't let me. Fat Pat, can you give me some pointers, man? Uh you get his pointer, man. <laughs> mm, I love that. That's a comedian right there. You wait, did you, you wait did you hear it up and then poke did, it? <laughs> did you hear uh by the way, uh speaking of comedian? Hey! It's my guy! Yes, rape! Yeah. There you go. It happened. Yay. What up, brother? I heard somebody wanted to touch pee pee, so I can't. I want to touch Brock's <laughs> pee pee. Uh, <laughs> if you have, uh, Magog, if you have any, any, do you have any potions or anything that I could use so that we can like actually convince Brockus that this marriage can work? You know, Who the fuck are you? Does <laughs> <laughs> he never respond? Now, now he'll show himself out. out. Great. <laughs> God damn it, McGog. Now you got fucking Zell. Just saying, like, he had nothing to say to that. He was just like, he was just like, oh. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> fucking fake ass crying. <laughs> I just want McGog to love me, you know? <laughs> you got to become one of his patrons, faggot. I oh, like fuck it that. when they cry. <laughs> hey McGog, did you see those uh, two animal memes I, uh, I sent you on Twitter? No, I don't pay attention to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that's cool. It's just a fucking owl looking pissed off saying, uh, like, hey, bitch, I heard you was talking shit. Why you gotta bring Gemini into this? <laughs> Not that owl. What's owl, up, just... Pat? <laughs> Hello. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Somehow that was the gayest fucking thing I've seen come out of poisoning the well. That oh, voice. Wow, right that is not true at all. Did you see the tattoos we're getting? No, no. Uh, I have not seen the tattoos you're getting. They are... it's, been, it's been a really long time, Pat. You and Sophie are supposed to come and do a show with me or something. Well, let's let's uh let's go just do a show. I wanna I want I wanna pet your dragon, my man. I know you do. His name is Rufus. Oh, like Schmeckle, the 13th, now. The 13th Schmeckle. Apostle. <laughs> hey, Schmeckle, you there? No. Nah, bro. He's gone. He was like, fuck, McGog's here. Show's over. <laughs> <coughs> fuck you. Fuck do you want? <laughs> Schmeckle, now that your internet's better and you're better, uh, when are you going to tear apart our leader, Antoine, for being a stupid leader? Uh, once my voice comes properly back, uh, I will uh, 
Uh-oh, go on the proper villains, and I will teach Antoine everything he's doing wrong, which is a lot. <laughs> you have to clear a nice little chunk of time for me. Well, when your throat gets better, you can also teach him how to suck dick properly. Exactly. It, it'll be educational across the board. Brock yes. knows how to do that. Yes. Pat, Sorry, what you been up to, man? Just, man, I got, uh, I, actually, the gayest thing I ever did uh, for Poison Wells, I got married. Yeah, I stopped uh, caring. That, that, uh, that's, been, that's been the biggest uh, bullshit. Now, congratulations. I saw the pictures, and I was like, ugh. I mean, I to was a like, woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, good for him. Was it a Vegas wedding? I wanted actually that was what we were trying to do as Vegas. So I did as close to Vegas. So I wore an Elvis jacket. That was my only move. Hell yes. Do it. Do it. Brockus, why aren't you using my profile pic? I made that for you with my magic. I am using your profile pic. No, you're not. You're using like a snipped version. It has like part of the next poster. Next oh, to I know what shit. he's talking about. Oh, yeah, the one, the yeah, one, I, I don't know. The version I'm more. using, dude. Like I, I thought I, I had updated it, but I took the time. Here I am. You know what? You know what? Fuck it. I don't even care anymore. You want to look stupid? Go ahead. <laughs> no, Bears, don't, you're Brock embarrassing is, yourself. Brock is, you're making you're making Magog mad. Magog, no Magog. We we're, we're still very th right. Brock is very thankful. Extremely about, thankful. About Whatever. No, that that was really cool of you. You can, you can talk to my human avatar from now on. I'm leaving. No, oh, oh, fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah. Pissy Magog. What's up, guys? How are you doing? <laughs> I swear to God, I, I you make me want to make my fucking pyromancer so bad that I'm just like I gotta get on the same level as my dog. I swear to fucking Christ. Uh, no, that I, was just a nice little. That was just a little, nice little slice at the end. Pissy fucking Magog. <laughs> we, uh, did. we got the pissy one today. Yeah, Schmeckle messaged me the other day and asked me if I was free tonight, and I didn't think I would be. I literally just got home, so. Um, but glad I could hop on and say hi to everybody. Well, I heard you've been super busy with homework and shit, so. Yeah, I had like a shit ton of photography for my photography class to do today, and so I had to go out into the world and take like, I think she wanted a minimum of 85 pictures. Fuck that. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that kind of time to <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm done with school after this fucking semester. Yeah, I'm like the sh I'm the shittiest photographer ever because after about like 15, 20 photos, if we ain't got it, then we're not getting it. <laughs> I'm not gonna right. do it. I'm like, like fame. He will take so many photos that I have to go, you know, look through. Now that, but that's more the a blind dog will find a bone. Uh, that you know, he doesn't have to be a good photographer. He just takes enough photos. Something will be good. I'll take you yeah. know, 15, 20 photos. I go. Well, no, those work, so I guess the, we'll just scrap that day. Well, even a broken watch is right twice yeah, a day. Yeah, exactly. So. He'll, he'll work his way to it, but uh, we, we had to do a couple shoots. Uh, we did that uh, was it the Ponga shot drinking game that was at uh, Spencer's Gifts, and we were doing the photos for that, and I couldn't stand how long he was trying to take photos all fucking night, and it was driving me crazy. It's like, it's a game. Take a picture of the game, and then we go have a drink. But he was just like, we come more angles. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hate about photography class. They're making me like the, the instructions. Like I have to take multiple pictures, but they all have to be like one of them has to be like uh, one set of them has to be like parallel picture frame, and the other one has to be diagonal, and then the other one has to be like foreground to background to show depth and and then uh, another one has to be like a framed set so they all have to kind of belong together but you put them next to each other and they make a complete picture you know that kind of horse shit yeah well, how are you gonna get on in life if you don't know how to do that i went around taking pictures today and only like i want to say only four of the 25 to 30 naked women that i was up in a tree taking pictures of through their windows caught me. <laughs> so, but only a few of those gave me a boner. So I mean, it's kind of whatever. <laughs> right. That's I mean, it, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to be choosy. It's for art projects. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Women um, quote unquote women. 
Ugh, I don't want to nerd out. I'll sit there and start nerding out about uh, camera equipment and shit, so I'm not going to talk about that. It'll just bore the shit out of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. that's um, so. But I had a pretty good stream last night with Antoine. You guys should drop by and say hi. I wish it, it I had more right. free time. I, hey, I fought to get here tonight. I had to, I had to give a few cocktails in the wife and just throw her on the couch. I'm like, hey, there you go, sweetie. Right. <laughs> so she's like, go have fun um, with your friends. I'm visualizing you you, you throwing Speaking her on the couch. She never answered my question. What was the question? Fuck off with your question. I, I wanted to. I asked her on Instagram when huh. you married an Indian chick, or was that just her impression of Miss Moneypenny? What the fuck does that even mean? It's a picture of her with a penny question. actually attached to her forehead on fucking uh, Instagram. Oh, like, that's right. We were out. <clears throat> that was yeah. Us. Uh, Monday night. Yeah, we were um, Mims. Uh, my wife and I, we all went to play bingo and she sticks this penny to her head. It was this weird cultural appropriation thing. <laughs> but somehow it seemed I don't, with the, maybe it was the penny made it seem anti-Semitic. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I, and all of a sudden she's posing. I went fuck? fuck. Why are you putting that on the internet? For people to see, it's not a good picture. <laughs> Take a picture of the dog. That's what she's good at. We used to do that in fucking high school. That was a like junior high thing, where we take a penny and put it on your forehead. And you push it really hard, right? Yeah, and you just and see then and then you and then you and then you tell somebody you're like, see how many times you hit the back of your head before the the penny falls off, and the more time the the fewer hits before the penny falls off your head, you win the game. And then they're like, cool. And so you do it a couple times. And then you put the penny on you. You do it. You put the penny on their forehead. And if you push really hard, but then like pull the penny off when you pull your hand away, it feels like it's still there. And they just right. start smacking the back of their own fucking head, like multiple fucking times, trying to get the penny to fall off, and it never happens. So you just sit there and laugh at them while they're smacking the back of their own fucking head. See, I did the insensitive thing. I just took a red marker, put it, on, uh, put a dot on my forehead, and turned to my friends and said, "My Buddha can kick your Buddha's ass. Go fuck yourself." I, I invented like, a new version right, of that like game. like so many things not right. I, I invented a new version of that game after the person like slaps the back of their own head multiple times and then they realize the penny's not there. I then, like after I'm done laughing at them, I then go burn their house down. <laughs> that's better. That's, that's better. the way I, made the, I make the game your own. You know, everyone has their own. <laughs> Arson! <laughs> Did, did an owl come <laughs> I cracked that you? joke in a stream the other day. I, I think it was like the Kumite I was like watching or something. And they were talking about something about like teachers, or, you know, people saying that never let your dreams die, go on to, you know. And so I cracked a joke. I was like, my teacher in school said I couldn't be an arsonist when I grew up, but I don't respect anybody who lets their house burn down. <laughs> 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 It's funny because someone almost died. <laughs> right? I, I got... Uh, see, I make uh, uncomfortable jokes a lot. And, and on Twitter, it's a great place to do that. Because people either get that you're joking or they don't care. Or you're just trolling somebody. Who cares? Um, I forget sometimes that I'm doing that when I, when I switch. You know, I'm still in trolling mode. And I switch over to my Facebook or something. And I will start seeing some stupid post. And I'll make some comment. And these are people that like, I know. And I'm... I come across like you start talking to normies, it doesn't go well. And someone had this this uh, old friend of mine. She posted these pictures, four pictures. It was like a this like blizzard snowstorm, and then it was like uh, uh, the Sahara Desert, and then dragons, and then fire. And they go, "This is how your parents explain, you know, describe what it was like for them to get to school." And so then I just put, "Yeah, but did they get there and there was an AR-15 waiting for them?" <laughs> and, <laughs> it, it's it was like the day uh -oh. it was the same day i think of the tragedy but like i understand i have dark sense of humor and so immediately the girl like comments she replied to <coughs> so she goes um i post these things to make light and try to make your day better for people these memes you come in here and say this stuff it's it's hurtful i'm like fine i'm sorry how dare you pat. i have a dark sense of humor yeah, it's that gallows humor. I learned it in the military. I mean, I think I've had it all my life, but the military amped it up because that, that's I how mean, you deal with stress. And, and yeah, shit that's, that's, that's the same thing with uh, like it's so funny when uh, comedians, the shit that we say in green rooms and stuff to each other are the most 
uh, awkward jokes ever that you would never say in public, but comedians, we will get away with it, uh, talking to ourselves because we understand there's no malice behind it. But it's it's like so weird when it slips out to the public and all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> what? Like even Jerry Springer, not Springer, Seinfeld said he wouldn't do colleges anymore because they're too PC, the PC culture. Yeah. yeah. And that's from Seinfeld. Like, yeah, yeah, he even talked about his daughter. Like, he was like, um, his daughter, like, he, he, they said something to her about a dress or something. And his daughter, who's like 14 or 16, said, That's sexist, daddy. And he replied, like, in the interview, he's like, That response from my daughter scares me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was the thing. Like, uh, my my buddy uh, Tim was playing Blacksburg, Virginia, like the next week after the tragedy, uh, where I guess like thir- uh, thirty students or some uh, were shot up at the uh, University of uh, Virginia or uh, Virginia Tech, and he he calls me up and he goes, "Hey man, I think uh, what do you think my my opening line should be? Because I don't I want to like get ahead of this, you know I, I can't like not say something, so I, I want to like break the ice when I get up there, and he, he says, so what if I just go up there on stage and just go, hey. Uh, so 30 students walk into a room. Stop me if you heard this one. And I was like, that's a great opening line, but it's not going to go well because <laughs> no. yeah, it's, it's funny in the green room. <clears throat> Don't take that shit on the road. Like just, <laughs> no, it's, it's the same. Like after nine 11, you know, I saw like a t-shirt on t-shirt hell.com, like literally the week of nine 11. That yeah. was like, it said nine 11 was a terrible tragedy. And then on the back, it said, those planes are really expensive. <laughs> and it's like who would buy that the week of 9-11 like <laughs> yeah it's not only buy it but design it and have it put up and ready to go like right but like that's the other side it's like you can't wear that shirt no you'll get jumped <laughs> so it was like but i yeah i'd say I, but like you were saying you when you mess up, when you have serious shit going around you. You say, I use comedy always as a shield. It's always been my mask. I've been, at, I was at my grandmother's funeral uh, a few years ago and I was just cracking jokes. Like, I'm the worst at funerals because it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I can't stop making jokes because I, I can't allow feelings to be expressed at any point. So it's, it's just, it's a facade the whole time. Yeah. And uh, I'll get real later in the shower I'm well sorry. i think that was a big inspiration behind the creation of magog was like my gallows humor and like i said i got it from the military man i went to war you know i went to iraq i did convoys man i i fucking saw buddies get blown up you know and shit ieds and stuff hey man i hear you i went to iraq too yeah. um i got I, I got uh i had a different experience though i was being you know i was uso and being carted around right but, right yeah but i had a rolly bag with me and like there's like nothing but sand and dust and gravel yep. and rolling bags don't tra- oh my god it was the worst yeah you're so good for bringing that yeah yeah <laughs> then the <laughs> next time I, next time i went out i went out uh, I came <laughs> fat pats over here like i've been to iraq and they had like a three-star hotel i was oh, pissed it was, well well no <laughs> <laughs> i went the first time i went i went to i was to kuwait and iraq and stuff and I, I they but i was in uh blackhawks every day going to different bases and stuff we're gonna clip and, that, by the way. And then, um, <laughs> then we did uh, the next time I went back. I wasn't gonna be an idiot and bring a rolly bag like my regular case. So I brought my dad's old parachute bag from uh, from Vietnam. I was like, I'm gonna come in with legit shit. So I come, you know, walk in, got my bag, and I'm like, Oh, we're just gonna put you up in one room at Arif John, and you're just gonna stay there the whole time. <laughs> oh, really? You were at Arif John? Yeah, that's where I was based out of. I'd make runs to Iraq, but we were based in Kuwait, Arif John. Yeah, I did. I did Arif. When were you there? Uh, 2008 and 2000 something else. I can't remember. Uh, you, you missed me. I was there 09 to 10. Okay. I was there over all the holidays. I, I got there in um, August and didn't come back to my home base until February, March, early March. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I did, you know, I did like uh, Basra, Talil, uh, yep, Fob, been there, been there. Hunter and Apache. Yep. Virginia, uh, Patriot. I did those. You didn't go to Biop or uh, the first time I went there. I was actually supposed to be go up to uh, Liberty, uh, uh, the, one of the palaces. Uh, I was going to play one of Saddam's palaces and be a part of this award ceremony. And the this was during the uh, swine flu outbreak. Yeah. And the Kuwaiti government. I wasn't supposed to leave Kuwait, and 
So like right when I got off the plane, they, they take your temperature. They have this little laser beam put on your head, which let me tell you something right when you land in Kuwait and they're putting a laser beam in your head, you're like, knew it, knew it. This place is backwards. And <laughs> so, but they, they take your temperature, they write down and get this little slip, slip of paper. And then uh, you have to come back within 48 hours. Well, 48 hours, I was going to be up in uh, Iraq. Well, about 49 hours later, the Kuwaiti government starts looking for us and they want to know where the hell we were. And they come to Arif John looking for us and they're, you know, they, they're, very then they can't tell tell them that we're up in iraq now so they had to like reroute us back down on a fixed wing back into virginia or whatever or lso i remember what it was and uh get us back and t- rework it where it looked like we'd never left kuwait just to, so we could get rechecked out by the doctor so i ended up not making it up to saddam's palace which i really wanted to go up there and, and do a show in his place but yeah right on well, you know, you got to, like I said, you got to have that gallows humor. Like one of the funniest things I heard, because I went to see a friend after his truck got hit with an IED. Um, he got, uh, I think it was about a hundred pounder. So it it blew that truck up pretty good. Mm. But he lived and he, you know, he had pretty minor injuries because we had armor and everything. But mm. I mean, God, I was there in the, I was there in the hospital room visiting him. Mm. And we were all talking and laughing and joking and stuff because, you know, he lived. So, you yeah. know, celebrate. And this colonel come in to give him his, you know, badge of honor or whatever, you know, combat action medal or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And the colonel, it was, he was like the base colonel for fucking Arif John. We're talking like fucking up there, man, high mm-hmm. ranking. And uh, he come walking in and you know how officers are. They don't get to do any of the cool stuff. They have to sit behind a desk. So I think, that, they, I, think I actually got a challenge coin from that guy, from the, the base colonel. Uh, it's a big square one from the Arif John guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got quite a few. We could, if you wanted to coin with me, man. Let's go. <laughs> you wouldn't win. I've got, I've got sec def. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm paying then, I guess. <laughs> right, you're pay. Everybody paid when they played with me. But I was being collapse. I drove people around when I wasn't doing convoys. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. So, at my home station, anytime a general or somebody landed, I'd fucking drive them to their hotel. Oh, once you get a general stuff and you're getting some. So yeah, so it's coin, man. Yeah, SecDef is basically a four-star general, but yeah. he's a civilian. But anyway, yeah. um, my friend's in the hospital bed, and here comes this colonel, and they do the award thing, and you know, he says we can stay. He's like, Oh, your friends can stay, and how you guys doing? Shook our hands too. And then uh my friend's just sitting there in the hospital bed, and the colonel's like, Oh, you know, you're out there in the action and all this and that, trying to make it sound cool, I guess, or something. And then he was like, What did it feel like? And without missing a beat, my buddy said, well, sir, didn't feel like a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> to a full bird colonel. <laughs> well, sir, didn't feel like a blowjob, I'll tell, I tell you that. I went, I went uh, uh, we did a, a charity, we did a, uh, I think I was in Iowa, and we did a, a poker run with a biker uh, motorcycle group. And I one of the posts out in like Cedar Falls area, I think. And we were doing this run. Uh, go pick up all his money to collect money for this guy. Uh, he would uh, quadriplegic. He got some shrapnel from one of the IEDs where him back in the neck. Well, incidentally, the next night we were going to be in Minneapolis where he was, uh, where he was in the hospital, the veterinary hospital or veterinary <laughs> veteran hospital over there. Um, but I walk in, I thought, man, we're going, his, his girlfriend was there. His sister and his mom were in the room. And I was like, man, we're going to walk in here and it's going to be the most depressing thing ever. Not at all. The guy was on a, a, a respirator. He can, you know, all he can kind of do is just tilt his head back and forth and look around. Couldn't stop making inappropriate jokes. He's talking about how it, you know, masturbation now is going to have to take someone to work his hand for him. It was just like, couldn't like he, he knew his situation. It wasn't going to change, but he just, man, it was just the, yeah. that was the way to get ahead of it. <clears throat> Thing. I think yeah. I think that's what happens. Also, it's what one I do. My, one of my favorite stories to tell from Iraq is um, you always see all the naughty shit drawn on walls. You know, the army know how to draw dicks on a wall like fucking pros, man. That shit's all Renaissance paintings and shit. You know, like we're talking fucking veins and hair and everything, right? Yeah. And you're used to seeing shit, you know, and and when I was there, you know, there was all this, you know, Obama this and Obama that and suck my dick and, you know, all this terrible shit. So none of that really sticks with you because it's everywhere. But one day I went to the, the shit, uh, into the, to the fucking shower caddies and they have toilets in them too. And I, I fucking dropped trout and I was taking a piss and I looked up 
and right there on the wall above the urinal said Toy Story 2 was okay. <laughs> yeah, like all this, just all this cancer all over this wall, and the guy's <laughs> like, "Look, I gotta get, I gotta get my message across." <laughs> that was fucking great. Even though the message is massive in difference, uh, well, that one it, always stuck with me. You know, <laughs> you know hey, what triggered the fuck out of uh, Pat is if somebody had put on their um. Die Hard does not count as a Christmas movie. Fuck you! I hey, I Die agree with you. Movie. I'm just saying that I would argue because I would have. I would have. Die like, Hard is a Christmas movie uh, just as much as Lethal Weapon is. Okay. I Call agree. I agree. I agree with that too. Yeah. I agree. I fucking love Shane Black. Anyway, uh, Magog, I have a question for you, and I'm sorry if it's a little too personal, but we talked before about um, the Magog persona being being therapeutic, or at least. Oh no! I think it was Pat talking about like this stuff is therapeutic to a point. Yeah, it's cathartic. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Um, you said um, the humor that you learned, you brought it over to Magog. On top of that, do you also find that the Magog character itself? You've seen some things that I couldn't even imagine. Is it therapeutic? Does it help in that regard? Uh, not really, because I personally never really had anything that bad happen to me personally. I, I had some stuff happen to some friends, but everybody lived, so I was one of the, I was, we were pretty lucky, you know? Okay. Um, the fucking convoy team that showed up to replace us got blown all to hell, you know? Oh, so, Jesus. you know, it's just, you know, like, sometimes you make it out without a fucking scratch, and then sometimes you're just part of that troop that gets fucking hit all the time. And so I'm, I'm thinking you all that. I, didn't you also have your uh, your spine do like an uh, an accordion bit? Well, yeah, I got injured in Iraq, um, but it wasn't from. I mean, it wasn't from combat. I didn't get blown up. I we were in a kill zone. Don't get me wrong. We were we saw movement on rooftops and the, all the lights on the street went out all of a sudden while we were traveling down it. That's never a good sign. Uh, <laughs> and we had uh, movement on rooftops. Guys with AK forty seven started shooting at us and stuff. So we had to get out of that kill zone quick. Yeah, if you, if you uh, I slept, never been, I slept in a you, tomb in Talil, dude. Oh, boo hoo! If you never, <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been in the military, like uh, I come from a military family. I've never been in the military, but my father was, my grandfather was. I have much respect for it. But if you've never been in the military, um, and and you're a fan of documentaries, and you're willing to go to, and this isn't directed at you, Magog. Obviously, you've been in the military, but if you want to kind of go there. To at least get some sense, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Restrepo, and that mo- that it's a documentary. It's called Restrepo, and that that uh, that documentary will take you there, man. It's very very traumatic, but I think worth watching if you haven't been in the military. See, that's the that's the other thing. Like I I grew up uh, with a military family. Both my grandfathers uh, and my my father were uh, military, but my dad's uh like my my grandfather on my mom's side it was a He's a colonel in the Air Force, and but his you know he he flew in uh, World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam, and my my dad was in Vietnam, but he was Army, so he was one of the grunts that was saw the shit. And to hear my dad and my grandfather talking about Vietnam, it's two different experiences. Yeah, one flew over and made it back in time to the clubhouse for bridge that night, and the other one slept you know next to a in bungee a stick. Yeah, yeah, just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it. There, there's that difference, but uh, let me finish what happened. But basically, I dukes a hazard my truck over a concrete barrier they put in the road to stop us from getting out of the kill zone. And because I wasn't rolling a trailer that mission, I was in the maintenance bob, the bobtail, so I didn't have a trailer weighing me down. I dukes a hazard my truck over that fucking thing, and I oh. fucking hit my head on the ceiling of my own damn trunk, compressed my spine, and blew a disc in my neck. Shit. And that's why I'm not in the military anymore because they med boarded me after that. So I did. Uh, Jesus I, I did. I, well, I can compare. I got you, man. I was in uh, one of their, their Hummers and I was, I took it on a, a, a joy ride around the base <laughs> and I took it past. The, they said, slow down. I went, what? And I hit a bump, man. And uh, it shimmied. Fat, so, fat, Pat is being, <laughs> fat Pat is being humble. What really I, happened? What really happened is he was in a Humvee. They got attacked. He got captured, and there he was had ninjas. to build an, a, an iron suit to escape the the caves. 
Yeah, and no, that like, was a movie, but it was basically the same story though. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian ninjas. That's the thing, man. It's, it's so funny. I love try, every time I talk to somebody that uh, was in the military. I always like start topping their stories with my weak rolly bag, and I'm like, "Look, I got stories. I saw some shit." I was like, yeah. "I, I got moved to the Swiss. <laughs> I got moved to the Swiss hotel in Kuwait City." It always blew my mind that one of the most accurate depictions of Iraq was Iron Man. Yeah, actually, yeah, that that uh, like, and loved, I, I, I don't the most like, yes. yeah, yeah. Like, I don't mean necessarily like the shooting locations because they choose the, you know, the deserts here in America or whatever right. to shoot at, you know, for safety reasons. But I'm talking about just the aesthetics of it. I mean, like when he's in that Humvee and he's all like, he calls the driver a soldier and she goes, actually, I'm an airman. That's the only movie I've ever seen that in. We right. did more Preacher. convoys than the fucking army did because they didn't know how to do it. We had to take it over. That was vehicle ops. That was my career field. <laughs> you know, like. We were fucking pounding ground since two thousand fucking three, man. You know, <laughs> so like, like that always like makes me smile when I see the, the original Iron Man movie, and he says that, and she's like, "Actually, I'm an airman," and you know they have the stripes on and stuff, and it's just like, "Yep, that's vehicle ops right there. That's my boy." That's fucking cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. That is the first time I've heard that opinion on that movie. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. Yeah, because movies oftentimes get a lot of shit wrong when they portray military. What would you oh. say is the most insulting, more recent movie? Um, I I don't know about recent because I don't have a lot of time to do anything. Um, okay, but, then one that one that just but comes one to mind. one that sticks out sticks out is like, and you see this in movies all the time. Like I just recently watched Red. You guys remember that retired, extremely dangerous yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Um. Hey, you know, it's a fun movie, whatever, based on a comic book that I read. That's why I watched it. But anyway, there's a scene where they got to sneak into the Pentagon. So he's dressed like a general and she's like playing his secretary and they're sneaking in. Right. Well, they're yeah. walking through this like hallway garage and they get in the elevator. He has his cover on until he gets in the elevator. It's like, no, you take your cover off the moment yeah. you step under, under a fucking roof. Like the moment you step indoors. Yeah, you take your fucking cover off. I don't care if you're an officer. The only people who that don't take their hat. covers off take your hat off. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hat, yeah. Talk to these laymen. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Uh, <laughs> cover means hat, people. Yeah, the I don't people, know what the cover means. <laughs> the only people who don't take their covers off indoors are, are people who wear berets, which is security forces, and you know, what's a cody? A what? What a security! <laughs> all the security I met was all Ugandans. That was all. The yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they know the way. way. Yeah, that's exactly. what was so funny. I heard when uh, when that that meme started coming out, and everyone was like, "It's not even a good impression." I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> you know, I, like, I got. Yes, I it like, is. I got into an argument with uh, the, the, all the uh, mess halls are guarded or oh, God, God, whatever. Yeah. They're, they're all Ugandans. All the gates and stuff. It's all Ugandans. That, yep. that was their that was their participation in it and uh so i didn't have a cat card so i couldn't get in but i had a uh guy that uh, what the hell you call him we had security that was around us that would follow us ever because we got you had a liaison yeah we had a liaison but we had this security group i guess they put us at gs14 or something was what our our standard was that's how they have to treat you a certain way yeah you were so, uh, yeah you were pretty high ranking then yeah they basically they had to give you a a, a government number for staff so they the base knows how to deal with your presence there yeah. so we had gs14 uh kind of clearance well our liaison has to like communicate to the ugandans that we're allowed into the chow hall to get food uh and certain ugandans they just were not gonna let us in so that when that meme came out i was like man i listened to a conversation by our liaison and, and the and the guy the uh, ugandan and it was spot on. it was it was uh they go I do not know you. I yeah. do not. I do not know. They're like, no, this, these are the comedians. I do not. They, they know Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I do not know that. <laughs> you get, you get, you get a little, you get a little, like, you get a little racism too when you, when you deal with that. Because like, one of my friends, <laughs> one of my staff sergeants, these Ugandans wouldn't let us into the fob. Like we had a fucking 25 fucking truck convoy yeah. waiting outside the gate this, of fucking Bob seems, Adder. He was like right? a bitch. 
There's no way this they put this all together. They, this is all ma- manufactured by ISIS. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and one fucking piece of paperwork was like signed wrong or something, so they wouldn't let us. <coughs> I'm over there with my staff sergeant. He was my TC for that mission, my truck commander, and he was yelling at this guy. He's like, "Listen to me, you lion king motherfucker! I'm coming in here. Oh you like it or not? I'm fucking oh hungry and tired." <laughs> <laughs> you lying pig motherfucker so he's like you're gonna let my fucking convoy in so we can eat and sleep you got that fucking Simba get your fucking manager on the phone you know and I'm just back there with my fucking weapon just like mm-hmm, another day in Iraq yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear nothing I had nothing Meanwhile, there's Ugandans in the back who's seen that movie and been like oh this motherfucker hit him hard oh Mbappe <laughs> you're fucked up man yeah, he was he was straight like you you fucking opened the gate. You got that Rafiki, you know? <laughs> like Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is the way my friends. This is the way my brothers. Yeah, man. Oh, I had a I know this is a funny one. But one of my staff sergeants, we were dead tired, man. We just came off a 23-hour mission. Like no sleep on the road 23 hours. We had to keep stopping for IDs, wait for EOD to come clear them. And we finally got to JBB, Joint Base Balad, and we fucking were dead and we still had to download cargo too so like half of us went to go bed down while the other half of us watched you know the download of the cargo and stuff and then they told us they'd come back for us but they didn't of course not they fucking passed out man nobody came back for us so i ended up doing 32 hours that day without sleep and we all walked to the chow hall first we were like fuck it let's eat and then we'll sleep and we're walking to the chow hall and we are so dead tired one of my staff sergeants there's these clearing barrels at the um at the chow halls where you're supposed to put your weapon in and charge it and check it and everything. Make sure you don't have a round in it. Yeah. And you're supposed to clear your weapon. (laughs) We're walking up to the chow hall and my staff sergeant, he doesn't put the barrel of the M4 into the, into the barrel, into the metal barrel. He actually just points it in the general direction and cocks the hammer back, you know, the handle back. (laughs) And that fucking thing went off, man. And this bullet went into the chow hall and, and and we, all we heard was cacao. And we all looked over at the staff sergeant. He was like, oh, fuck. I'm going to have to fill out paperwork on this. And all of a sudden, both doors of the chow hall, just people came out. It was just like, <laughs> that, oh, fucking, Jesus. that fucking round went through the fucking wall of the chow hall, bounced around into the fucking kitchen. And oh, everybody cleared out, man. Like, it was just like, <laughs> you saw all these Marines, like, diving out of the fucking doorways. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. It's, fu- it's, it's funny. It, uh, laugh at it. Looking back on it, but at the time we were all like, oh, "As long as no one got hurt, then yes." It, it, yeah, nobody got shot, but at, at the same time we're sitting there going, "Oh fuck!" Or even if someone got hurt, as long as they make a blowjob joke, we're good, man. <laughs> right? Oh, I got tons of funny stories. I punched a camel. I was <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. Antoine kicked a fucking shark, and you punched a camel. Oh yeah, I, I, I have a fucking long-standing history of punching animals that that come at me, bro. Especially <laughs> owls, apparently. <laughs> yeah, fucking owls, man. Everybody go watch that stream if you want to hear that story. But, I'm yeah. not even kidding you. I was fucking laughing so most hard. People, yeah, like, <laughs> most people were pissing themselves when I told that story. <laughs> was but it was... Fucking- it was a very similar story. Fucking ten years later, a fucking camel come walking up to my trunk, my truck, and we were <coughs> sitting. We were waiting to cross into from Kuwait into Iraq, and we're at K Cross, and we're sitting there, and these fucking camels come wandering out of the desert. You know, part of the herd that this guy was like moving through. You know, and this camel just come walking right up to me, and I had my door propped open, and I was like, "Don't you fucking dare! Don't you fuck!" I'm sitting there eating an MRE. I know what he wants. You know, he wants my MRE food, you know, and he comes up and just suddenly it's his big ass head. Like he hesitates and then he walks, he starts to walk away and I'm like, good. And I turn away because I'm like that fucking camel got scared. I'm badass. All of a sudden this camel's head just right into my doorway and just started licking my body armor and oh God, he, his breath stank. And so yeah, I popped him. Like, <laughs> Let me, um, <laughs> I have a question for you. This is something I got a couple different uh, answers while I was over there. Uh, driving around between bases, uh, particularly in like uh, Kuwait, was um, every once in a while you come across either a dead camel or a dead goat on the side of the road for where yeah. herders had uh, discarded the body of a, one of their animals. Yeah, they just leave them. I mean, they can't move them. They're fucking right. Uh, 
there were the I said I said well do these these camels because sometimes they're, they're the herds are coming through the desert and uh one of the guys told me he said well they the herders are normally uh they don't own the herd these are those the shepherds that have to take them. yeah yeah no they work and for that, the people who own and, the animals and, uh, that they have to account for every camel or goat or whatever that they're they're moving that if one dies they need to be able to tell them where it is so they always try to leave it near a road or something right because yeah. they also the owners of the camels don't want the, the shepherds eating their their uh, camels or goats or something that that tends to happen. Yeah, and so that that they have to account for. It. So if it's dead, they need to be able to find it uh, to make sure that the guy wasn't eating their goats and shit on the way. I was like, that's a weird story. Is that true? So yep. do you have any clue does that does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, those camels are like purebreds. It's like they're horses. Yeah, like, because uh, they if have you to kill camel. a camel, it costs the uh, the U.S. government two hundred fifty thousand dollars minimum. Yeah, the, they were having the camel races. I was over there last time during uh, so Ramadan, but uh, where I couldn't drink water during the day, or at least not in front of anybody. Um, and they were uh, we did fuck them. They had the camel races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the other thing. I never. They, they told all of us. They're like, look, the people, a lot of the people that work at the Air John base, they, you know, they they are Kuwaiti and stuff, and this is their celebration. They're not technically supposed, to, but because they work for us on the base. They will come to work, but every, everywhere else is pretty much going to be dead zones. Like you're not going to see anybody. Yep. Um, but don't drink in front of them. It's it's insulting and stuff. They understand it's not your religion, but just don't do it. Yep. Now they do that, and then in Iraq they also okay. they also I'm, put bombs uh, in the corpses. So. I'm getting the icy stare from from the wife, so I'm gonna. Oh no, she woke up from a drunken stupor. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs> yeah, Bye Pat. He's in trouble. Don't get in hey, trouble, sir. Later, man. Bye guys. Take it easy. So uh, yeah, we're uh, we're we're yeah, gonna wrap got, up. You got all these. What's up, Shrekle? Sorry. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap shit up. Uh, uh fuck. Oh, Who'd so now have? you're so now you're running this ship. Exactly. Uh, pop in for the the start and the end. <laughs> Uh, t uh, tonight we had uh, Ethan, Ralph. Uh, we've had uh, Brockus and Zell, uh, Magog, uh, and Fat Pat, uh, and I think that oh, and uh, and Samosh. And uh, th that's that's fucking it, cunts. Uh, tomorrow we got uh, the Cunt News Network. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll be less sick soon, cunts. I'll I'll participate uh, soon. Uh, anyway, cunts, uh, have a good one. Get the